Disaster Ethics is the subject at a conference in Kansas City, December 7th, 2011. Joining us now is Summer McGee. She is the Director of Graduate Studies at the Center for Practical Bioethics and an Executive Editor of the American Journal of Bioethics. And Summer, your presentation was entitled The Collision Between Public Health Ethics and Clinical Ethics. Talk to us about that collision and tension that seems to present itself, especially during a disaster. Well, one of the things I think is really important is that medical professionals, when they go through their training, they're taught to uphold certain values in the clinical encounter. And those include things like the common phrase we've all heard, do no harm. And in the course of dealing with ethical issues in a disaster, what we realize is that given resource scarcity and other kinds of problems, it's almost impossible for a physician or any other kind of clinician to not inadvertently perform some sort of harm. Some patients won't get care, some patients won't receive certain kinds of drugs. And so what we see is in fact those values that we are trained uh, to have in, in clinical medicine aren't the right ones when we're thinking about a disaster. And so what I've argued is that in fact we need to take more of a public health ethics approach and need to apply different kinds of moral values, more considerations about social justice, about solidarity and community when we're dealing with disasters because they are really experienced in and by the community. Part of this tension is it not the, the question of authority. You have moral authority and political authority and those tend to counteract each other or at least create even more tension, does it not? Absolutely. And what we see is, in fact, that there are quite a few conflicts between some of the p groups that have political authority and some of the groups that believe, or in fact probably do, have moral authority to act in these kinds of situations. So oftentimes there are conflicts between uh, some of the federal and state agencies like FEMA, the Coast Guard in the case of hurricanes, uh, and, and then the medical professionals on the ground who are doing what they think is best, and they see things from a very different perspective. And so oftentimes, who has the political authority to act is very different than those who, in fact, are on the ground making those decisions and arguably have the moral authority to make those decisions because they're the ones who are actually taking the action. Taking that a bit further then, you have those individuals who are dealing with the ethical questions and then you have those individuals who are dealing with policy and you have a little bit of that collision between ethics and policy as well, correct? Absolutely. And I think one of the things we see is that uh, we have the best of intentions when we write plans and we write policy for how to deal with these kinds of ethical dilemmas as they arrive in disasters. But it's always the thing that we didn't anticipate and we didn't plan for that trips us up because we've had to deal with, unfortunately, these disasters over and over in this country. But what happens is, is that we put together the very best plan that we can, thinking we've covered all of our bases, and then, then something else happens that trips us up. And so then we are faced with a situation where there is no policy or the policy doesn't quite fit the circumstance. And then somebody has to make those moral judgments. And the question is, who's the right person to do that? Whose values are the ones that really ought to be applied? Is it the values of the community and the people who are afflicted by this disorder? Is, is, it, um, is it the people who, for example, are doing the acting, the medical professionals? Or should it be policymakers? Should it be the politicians who have a little bit, perhaps, in some cases, more distance? And, and or could it even be the federal government? And so one of the things we have to really think about is where are we going to get our moral guidance from? And in a lot of cases, it can't come from the standard clinical guidelines and other practices that we refer to so often as a decision rules and, and we use in algorithms to make decisions in clinical medicine. Some of the common themes of what we've talked about today in, in other interviews have been around the idea of that there's no way of creating a one-size-fits-all kind of situation because disasters are so different, different parts of the world, different individuals. Do we do ourselves a favor if we just say, let's accept the fact that there will be tension, and as much as we plan for something, we know that whenever a disaster comes, we will in some ways be just flying by the seat of our pants. Uh, I think that that's true. I think that one of the unintended consequences of that point of view might be, well, then why should we plan at all? Why do we need to get prepared? Because we're never going to be able to account for all the different permutations that can happen. And I think that one of the things is if we build the ethical responses into our plans, 
into even thinking about who's going to be in the room to make the plan. If we then have ethics integrated throughout this process, we hope that the outcome will be better at the end. It's not a guarantee, but at least there's a greater likelihood that the rights of individuals and communities will be respected, that the liberties that we have to infringe on in public health emergencies will be proportional and our responses will be proportional, and that we have the sense that we need to engage in public justification. It's not a guarantee, but the chances are a lot better if we involve um, ethicists and ethical discussion from the beginning. Summer McGee is the Director of Graduate Studies at the Center for Practical Bioethics. She is the Executive Editor of the American Journal of Bioethics. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you.